overlapping with the areas of pharmacology, biology and chemistry. Toxicology is the scientific study of the characteristics and effects of poisons, toxins, illegal substances and prescription medications on living organisms. Although toxicology as we know it today is a fairly modern discipline, knowledge of poisons and the harm they can do dates back to ancient times. The Greeks and Romans possessed a fair amount of information about natural poisons, and they often used death by poison as a form of capital punishment. Paracelsus is one of the most highly regarded medical scientists from the 16th century, and is hailed as the father of toxicology for his writings and ideas, the most notable of which is the principle that the dose makes the poison. This is based on his findings that even safe chemicals, such as water or oxygen, can be toxic if too much is consumed, and that the toxic effects are determined by the dosage of the substance. As technology and society have progressed, so too has the field of forensic toxicology. The development of new scientific devices allows for more in-depth and reliable testing to be carried out. Despite these abilities, toxicologists have to remain mindful of contributing factors that are not easily detected through scientific analysis. These include individual tolerance to a substance, age-related effects, and drug-to-drug -drug interactions if there's multiple detected. The main role of a forensic toxicologist is to analyse biological samples usually collected by a pathologist during an autopsy and testing for substances or chemicals. They then generate a toxicology report and often confer with the medical examiner to help determine the cause and manner of death. It is generally known within the toxicology field that the most important legal drugs that are abused are alcohol and pharmaceuticals, and the most important illegally abused drugs are cocaine, amphetamines, ecstasy and opioids, including heroin and methadone. The types of samples that would be analysed depends on the type of death or incident that occurred. Most of the cases that forensic toxicologists work on involve a death caused by drunk drugs driving, which only requires a blood sample to test for alcohol levels. For cases that involve suicide or vehicle crashes that do result in a death, samples will be taken of the blood, urine, liver and the vitreous humour, which is the transparent tissue behind the lens in the eye. Homicides and suspicious cases will also require these samples, along with the gastric contents, bile and hair samples. Analysis of a blood sample can be useful in detecting and quantifying the presence or recent ingestion of a drug, as well as helping to determine the effect the drug had on the deceased at the time of death or when the sample was taken. Collecting a blood sample post-mortem presents a problem for toxicologists. The concentrations of a substance can differ from one place of the body to another due to lividity, the settling and pooling of blood following death. The liver is also regularly analysed by forensic toxicologists as it is the organ that is responsible for breaking down and metabolising most drugs and substances. In fact, some drugs become more concentrated while they're being processed by the liver and can be detected even when there are no levels found in a blood sample. The contents of the stomach can provide useful information in cases of suspected overdose or poisoning as many drugs and toxins can be ingested. Depending on how much time has elapsed from consumption to the time of death, undissolved capsules may also be discovered, allowing for reasonably simple identification. The more suspicious or unexplained the death or incident is, the more in-depth the analysis will be, as toxicologists are regularly required to testify to their findings in court it is important that they conduct their analysis in a standardised and methodical way. For a forensic toxicologist to achieve a positive identification of a substance or toxin, at least two independent analyses need to be performed, often using different testing methods. This is because it is possible to get false positives and false negatives. When conducting these complex tests, quantitative testing is also required. This determines how much of the substance is involved and can indicate the extent to which the individual was intoxicated at the time of death. The tests conducted by forensic toxicologists can take days, weeks or even months to complete 
Once the results are available, forensic toxicologists will discuss their findings with pathologists and other board-certified toxicologists. The results will have determined any drugs or toxins the deceased had in their system and the effect or level of impairment they would have caused. The results of these toxicology tests, along with discussions with the medical examiners, any field evidence from the crime scene and the personal history of the deceased are all combined into the final toxicology report, which is an important piece of evidence for investigators. If a definitive cause of death has been established and supported by empirical evidence, that will also be clearly stated. The role of a forensic toxicologist is highly important in aiding criminal and legal investigations. The ability to determine the presence or absence of a substance through the testing of biological fluids and tissue can provide details of a death that may otherwise have been overlooked. Let's look at a case that was solved through the help of forensic toxicology. Janie Lou Gibbs was born on Christmas Day in 1932 in Georgia. She was a dedicated member of the local church and operated a daycare business from her home. One day in 1965, Janie decided to poison her husband of 18 years by adding rat poison to his food. He became suddenly ill but did not die immediately and instead was admitted to hospital. While recovering in hospital from what doctors believed to be naturally occurring liver problems, Janie bought her husband some homemade soup that contained yet more arsenic. Her determination finally paid off when her husband died from what doctors believed was a liver disease. However, Janie Gibbs was not finished. Less than a year after her husband's death, she poisoned her youngest son, Marvin Jr., and doctors concluded that his death was a result of an inherited liver disease from his father. In 1967, her 16-year-old son named Lester also died suddenly. Doctors believed this was caused by a rare muscular disorder and conducted no investigation. Gibbs's only remaining son, named Robert, had recently become a father to a child named Raymond. As far as everyone could tell, Janie Gibbs was thrilled to be a grandmother. However, baby Raymond suddenly became ill and died, and only a month later, his father Robert also suffered the same fate. The family physician was immediately suspicious of the sudden deaths of a healthy baby and his father, and Janie Gibbs' luck had finally run out. An autopsy was immediately conducted on Robert, and through forensic toxicology, they discovered he had consumed a lethal dose of arsenic. All other members of the family were exhumed, and further toxicology tests revealed that all five had arsenic present in their bodies. Janie Gibbs was arrested, and although she was initially deemed unfit to stand trial due to a mental illness, she was later convicted to five life sentences for the deaths of her husband, three sons and grandson. The local community was shocked that a mother could do such a thing, and without the undisputable evidence provided by forensic toxicologists, Janie Lou Gibbs may have gotten away with murdering her entire family.